Hey everybody, I'm NBC 10 First Alert Meteorologist Glenn Hurricane Schwartz. They even put the hurricane on my jersey. You know how I got the nickname? I used to chase hurricanes for the Weather Channel. And I'm kind of well known for wearing bow ties. And the Phillies were nice enough to make a bow tie just for me. And so, of course, I have to wear it for them. Now, I hope you've enjoyed our weather education week so far. And for teachers and parents, you can follow this whole thing, go over what you might have missed, nbc10.com slash weather education. And today, we're gonna to be taking a weather quiz. Now, everybody gets affected by the weather. Most days, it's kind of nice. Or maybe you need a coat or an umbrella, and that's our job to tell you whether you need to do that. But some days the weather can actually be dangerous. And that's one of the things that we're gonna talk about a little bit with the quiz. Now, as you're taking the quiz, you can hit pause after each question so you have a chance to think of the answer before we go ahead and do it. Well, since we're at Citizens Bank Park, I gotta find somebody to help me take this quiz. Look who's here. It's the Philly Fanatic. Oh, okay. You know all about weather, right? You're here every day, every night. You get to experience the weather, okay. I'm gonna ask the questions and there's gonna be a choice. A, B, C, D, and in some cases, E. And the fanatic, you're gonna point with your bat to the correct answer, right? Okay, that's wrong. No, I didn't even ask the question yet. Um, okay, first question is related to thunder and lightning. Very important. The flash of lightning and the sound of thunder. If you can count 10 seconds, after the flash, because the flash always comes first, 10 seconds, how many miles away is that storm? Is it A, one mile, B, two miles, C, five miles, or D, 10 miles? Now think about that. You're counting 10 seconds. You got the flash of lightning and then it's one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, all right, just like that. What's the answer? B. You're right. You got it. I bet you didn't think you were going to either. That's the thing. Every five seconds you can count. It's one mile away. So here's how it works. You see the flash of lightning, and then you count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, crash! If you hear the thunder after five seconds, it's one mile away. And then the next time, if you can only count to four, what's happening? The storm is getting closer and you especially need to get indoors then. So the line is, when thunder roars, head indoors. All right, fanatic, you impressed me. That was not an easy question. All right, here's number two. Which is generally more dangerous? A is creek flood, B is river flood, C is flash flood, D is coastal flood. You got it, you, you ready? You, you think this is out? Okay, which one? You're right again! Oh my gosh! Take a bow, take a bow! Yes, two for two. Now in a creek flood, the water can come up pretty fast and it can be dangerous. 
The river flood, the water generally comes up more slowly, so you have time to get away from the river. A coastal flood, the same thing. You know about it far in advance. You can get away from the coast and be safe. But a flash flood, you can get that with a thunderstorm that's overhead and it just stays there and it pours for a couple of hours and then all of a sudden the water is rushing down the street. That's the most dangerous kind of flood. Number three, what kind of dangers can hurricanes cause? We're talking about hurricanes. Yes, that's my specialty. You know, I used to go chase them. The hurricane was coming. I would, I, well, I don't run. I would go in a car and drive to where the hurricane was going to be. You know, and, nah, you don't want to be outside. What types of dangers can hurricanes cause? A is damaging winds. B, coastal flooding. C, general rain flooding. D, tornadoes. Or E, all of the above. What's, what's the answer? Come on. Oh, you're cheating now? You need help? Come on, this one's easy. All of them. Yeah, that's why you point at E. E, me, e is all of the above. You got the answer right, you just kind of did it wrong. That's okay. I'll let you slide. Hurricanes could do a lot of different things. Hurricanes are huge. But inside a hurricane, sometimes there are even tornadoes. When a hurricane hits the land, sometimes it actually produces tornadoes. You know it produces flooding. You know it produces winds. And at the coast, you have coastal flooding. But the tornado one, yeah, some people don't get that. Hey, right, number four, what types of things can radar detect? A, how heavy the rain is? B, is it rain or snow? C, smoke from fires? D, tornadoes? Or E, all of the above? Hmm. And give that one some thought. Ah. You think you got it? You got E again. That's right. You don't have to hit them all. You just hit E and that takes care of the answer. Okay. The, the thing is, okay, people generally know about how heavy the rain is. And we show on TV sometimes a radar where th this area is rain, this area is snow. But what a lot of people don't realize is the radar can actually detect smoke from fires. And I've seen it. Now we're going to go and talk about the future. Right? You, you obviously are good about what happens now and about the past. Let me ask you about the future. If the climate continues to warm, by the year 2050, we're not going to see any snowstorms around here anymore. Is that true or false? True would be A, false would be B. Where's your bat? Okay, you got to keep a distance here. That is correct. So here's the deal. Yes, very good again. Here's the deal with that. The climate keeps warming. We have more warm days. We have more record heat. But we can still have days that are just cold enough for snow. And when that happens, you can not only get a snowstorm, you get a big snowstorm. Some of our biggest snowstorms in Philadelphia have occurred just in the last 10, 15 years when it's been a warmer climate than it was 20, 30, 50, 100 years ago. Yeah, so in the future, 
It might only snow three times a winter, but one of those could be like, yeah, big. Lightning can be dangerous even if it's not raining. Now, is that true or false? A would be true, B would be false. It's not raining now. <clears throat> Sorry. You let me down. You broke the streak. You had them all right. Oh. Ugh. I thought you were going to get that one, too. So, here, here's what happens sometimes with lightning. The storm could be way over on the horizon. You can barely see it. It could have blue sky overhead. And then a, a side bolt comes out of the storm and could get you, even if it's not only not raining, the sky could be blue up there. And that's what it's called. It's called a bolt from the blue. So when you hear that thunder, even if you can't see the storm or it's not raining, you still gotta go indoors. When thunder roars, head indoors. You gotta get back on track here, okay? Counting on you. Yeah, that's right. You got to do 10 push-ups for every wrong answer. Okay, a tornado watch. Now we're talking about tornadoes. This is a watch. Means A, conditions are favorable for tornadoes to form. B, a tornado has been spotted, so watch out. Or C, a tornado has been detected on radar. A, B, or C. Come on. <laughs> you, you need help? Okay. Yeah. A is right. Conditions are favorable. There's a difference between a watch and a warning. A watch is when conditions are favorable. There haven't been any tornadoes yet, but we're just letting you know there may be some development later now if one is on the ground you'll put out a tornado warning or if it's detected by radar we'll put out a radar a tornado warning so you're right there's watches and warnings for tornadoes and flash floods and winter storms so to watch means conditions are favorable a warning means it's there so take cover all right last last one now this is this one i'm telling you this is this is maybe the toughest question how deep does water have to be before it can sweep away a car okay think about this it's been raining hard and you're getting a flood and the water is coming up. But you, you, you're in a car with your family. How, how deep does that water have to be before the, the water just carries the car away? All right, A is two feet. B is three feet. C is four feet. D is five feet. Come on. It's cl it's close. Yeah, I mean you're close. <laughs> He's crying. I, I'm sh I'm sure nobody got all the answers right. You you were you were close this time. It's only two feet. If, can you imagine that? If you only got two feet of water and a car 
A car weighs thousands of pounds, can just be carried away. So that's why you don't drive into a flooded area. And the, the sign for that is, turn around, don't drown. So if you're in a car with somebody and the water's up to a point you don't know how deep it is, don't let them drive into it because you're in danger too. Hey, to what, you got six out of eight? Hey, yeah, that's a passing grade. All right, that's passing. All right, give me one. Okay, nice job. Thanks again for participating in Weather Education Week. I know it's different. Last year, we had to do it from home. This year, we were able to do it from Citizen Bank Park, but it's empty. Next year, let's hope we all get to be together. Thousands of you in the stands for next year's Weather Education Day. See you then.